Hello, everyone. I am Claire Jones, and I am dedicated to helping arts organizations and small business builders in their attempt to scale and grow their businesses without burning out. And I focus on building sustainable systems in order to do this, because you need to make sure that you are not the only person doing things in your business. And how can you create the systems and the structures and the strategies that allow you to step away from having to do everything yourself? So this is the next video in a series where I go over some business tips, tools, and strategies that I both use in my own business and in my clients' businesses to help them streamline their time so then they have more time for themselves, more time for their passions, more times for their friend and their family, and just have a better, happier, productive life. So today I'm going to go over business plans. Business plans can serve several purposes, and I will go through how they're made, what to include in them, and this will be part of a two video series. So make sure to stay tuned for the rest of it. So a business plan can serve several, several purposes, as I mentioned. It can help convince investors or lenders to finance your business, and it can also persuade partners or key employees to join the company. But most importantly, it serves as a roadmap guiding the launch and growth of your new business. So this template is a template that I use for my clients. I have a couple of clients that I'm walking through business plans at the moment, and it just really helps them get a good, clear idea of what their business is setting out to do, where it's going, how they're going to do it, and what to keep an eye on along the way. So this template is super important and super helpful for my clients and for myself too. And writing a business plan is also an opportunity to carefully think through every step of starting your company so that you can prepare for success. As I mentioned, this is your chance to discover any weaknesses in your business plan, any identity or identify any op opportunities you may not have considered and plan how you will deal with challenges that are likely to arise. Be honest with yourself as you work through this business plan and don't gloss over potential problems. Instead, figure out the solutions that you need in order to be successful. So a good business plan is clear and concise and a person outside of your industry should be able to understand it. Avoid overusing industry jargon or terminology that may confuse your reader. And most of the time involved in writing your plan should be spent on researching and thinking. Make sure to document your research too and include the sources of any information that you include because the people who are reading your plan want to make sure that everything you're saying is backed up by facts and figures. So avoid making unsubstantiated claims or sweeping statements. Investors, lenders, and others reading your plan will want to see realistic projections and expect your assumptions to be supported with the facts. This template includes instructions for each of the section of the business plan, followed by corresponding fillable worksheets. So the last section in the instructions, refining your plan, explains the ways you may need to modify your plan for specific purposes, such as getting a bank loan or for specific industries, such as retail. And at the end, proofread your completed plan or have someone proofread it for you to make sure that it's free of spelling and grammatical errors and that all figures are accurate. So on the first page here, we have the cover page, which basically is your business plan and insert the dates that, you know, you either completed the plan or you started making the plan just so that people have a good idea of the context. And then also include your company name, street address, city, state, zip, business phone number if you have one, website if you have one, and email address if you have one. So next is the confidential confidentiality agreement. And this is basically saying that the reader acknowledges that any information provided by you in this business plan, other than information that is on in the public domain, is confidential in nature, and that any disclosure or use of this information by the reader may cause serious harm or damage to you and your company. So the undersigned agrees not to disclose it without express written permission from you. So this is really preventing the readers from taking your ideal idea, stealing it and using it elsewhere. So this is important to include, just have them sign and have them either email it back to you or maybe you'll give them a hard copy and you want them to immediately return the hard copy to you as well. This 
is optional depending on how you share it with them. So have a signature line, printed or typed name, date, and um, just make sure that they know that it's not an offering of securities as well. So next is the table of contents, and this will be a brief overview of what's included. Again, I'm going to do this in two parts. So we will do the executive, well, the executive summary actually comes last, but it is the first section. And so you'll come back and do this. I'll cover that in the second video. In the first video, I'll be covering company description, products and services, and the marketing plan. And in the second video, I will be covering operational plans, management and organizational plans, startup finances and capitalization, and your financial plan, as well as appendices and the executive summary. So it's very comprehensive, very in-depth, and you can take this a lot of different ways. So feel free to be creative with it. So first in the executive summary, like I said, this is actually going to be happening last after you complete the rest of the template because it is a summary of everything else you've put into it. And so you can't really write the summary until you've written the rest of it. So it's the most important part because it's the only part that a prospective investor or lender often reads before deciding whether or not to read the rest of your plan too. So it should convey your enthusiasm for your business idea and get readers excited about it. So write this last after you have completed the rest of the business plan. That way you'll have thought through all of the elements of your startup and be prepared to summarize them. The executive summary should briefly explain each of the below. One, an overview of your business idea, which should be one or two sentences. Two, a description of your product and or service. So what problems are you solving for your target customers? Three, your goals for the business. So where do you expect the business to be in one year, three years, or five years? Your proposed target market. So who are your ideal customers? Five, your competition and what differentiates your business. Who are you up against and what unique selling propositions will help you succeed in that market? Six, your management team and their prior experience. So what do they bring to the table that will give your business a competitive edge? And seven, your financial outlook for the business. So if you're using the business plan for financing purposes, explain exactly how much money you want, how you will use it, and how it will make your business more profitable. And limit your executive summary to one or two pages in total. Remember, this is a summary. So after reading the summary, readers should have a basic understanding of your business, should be excited about its potential, and should be interested enough to read further. And after you've completed your business plan, come back to this section to write the summary on this page provided. This is exactly if you're doing the template, writing it out, or typing it out. Again, you can just keep a list of these, but it's helpful to put it all in a template. So then when you are done filling out the template, you can then just plug and place it into the more narrative format and present it to your reader in a more um, comprehensive way rather than a series of lists. So section number two is going to be your company description. This section explains the basic elements of your business. So include all of the ones below. One, company mission statement. So a mission statement is a brief explanation of your company's reason for being. It can be as short as a marketing tagline or more involved. In general, it's best to keep your mission statement to one or two sentences. So this is basically your raison d'etre. Why are you building this company? What is it going to do? What is it going to help do, etc. Number two, company philosophy and vision. So what values does your business live by? Honesty, integrity, fun, innovation, and community are potential values that might be important to your business philosophy. And B, vision refers to your long-term outlook for the business. So what do you ultimately want to become? What do you ultimately want to achieve? This is the long-term vision for your company. Number three, company goals. So specify your long and short-term goals, as well as any milestones or benchmarks you will use to measure your progress. So if one of your goals is to open a second location, milestones might include reaching a specific sales volume or signing enough contracts with a certain number of clients in the new market. Number four, target market. 
You will cover this in depth in the marketing plan section, but here you want to briefly explain who your target customers actually are. Number five is your industry. So describe your industry and what makes your business competitive. Is the industry growing? Is it mature? Is it stable? What is the industry outlook long-term and short-term? How will your business take advantage of projected industry changes and trends? And what might happen to your competitors and how will your business success successfully compete against them? Number six is your legal structure. So are you a sole proprietorship? Are you an LLC, partnership, corporation? And why did you choose this particular form of business? And if you have more than one owner, explain how ownership is divided. So if you have investors, also explain the percentage of shares that they own. This information is important to other investors and lenders. So after reading your company description, the reader should have a basic understanding of your business's mission and vision goals, target market, competitive landscape, and legal structure. So you can use the worksheet on the next page to fill this out. Put in your business name, your mission statement, your philosophy and values, your vision, your goals and milestones that you look to meet at some point and when you plan on meeting them, target market, industry competitors, legal structure, and ownership. Section number three is going to be your products and services. This section basically expands on the basic information about your products and services included in the executive summary and company description. So you need to explain in detail in this section. One, your company's products and or services. So what do you want to sell? How is it going to be manufactured or provided? How is it going to be delivered? Include the details of relationships with suppliers, manufacturers, and or partners that are essential to delivering the product or service to your customers. And number two, the problem that product or service solves. So every business needs to solve a problem that its customers face. Explain what the problem is and how your product or service solves that exact problem. What are its benefits, features, and unique selling propositions? Yours won't be the only solution because every business has competitors, but you need to explain why your solution is better than the others. So maybe you target a customer base your competitors are ignoring, or maybe your product or service has some other characteristic that gives it a competitive edge. You really need to explain why yours is the better solution compared to your competitors here. Number three, any proprietary features that give you a competitive advantage. So do you have a patent on your product or a patent pending? Do you have exclusive agreements with suppliers or vendors to sell a product or service that none of your competitors sell? Do you have the license for a product technology or service that's in high demand and or short supply? And four, how will you price this product or service? So describe the pricing, fee, subscription, or leasing structure of your product or service. How does your product or service fit into the competitive landscape in terms of pricing? Are you on the low end, mid range, or high end compared to your competitors? And how will that pricing strategy help you attract customers? And what is your projected profit margin? So these are all important questions to include here. And also include any product or service details such as tech technical specifications, drawings, photos, patent documents, or other support information in the appendices. You don't want to overburden the section with that extraneous content, but have it available for the reader if they want to check it out. So after reading this section, the reader should have a clear understanding of what your business does, what problem it solves for the customers, and the unique selling proposition that makes it competitive in the market that you're planning to sell in. So you can use the worksheet on the next page to help you complete this section. Put in your business name, your product service and ideas, special benefits that your products or services provide, the unique features of your products or services, limits and liabilities. Does your product have a limit? Is there a liability to your product? Maybe you can have a only so big service area. Put that here. Whatever limits or liabilities that may affect your product or service. Production delivery, how do you produce it? How do you deliver it? What suppliers do you need to make partnerships with? And any intellectual property special permits that you may need or may want to get.
and then include a very in-depth description of the product or service you plan on providing. Number four, so this section is huge and it's gonna take up a lot of time, but it's super important. So this section is the marketing plan. This section provides details on your industry, the competitive landscape, your target market, and how you will market your business to those customers. So this will take a lot of research and it will take a lot of time to do the research, but it's worth it. So number one, you need to do market research. Point blank, there's always going to be competitors out there and there's always gonna have to, you're gonna have to know what your market looks like. So there are two kinds of research, primary and secondary. Primary market research is information that you gather yourself. So this could include going online or driving around town to identify your competitors or interviewing or surveying people who fit the profile of your target customers or doing traffic counts at a retail location you're considering. Two, secondary market research is information from sources such as trade organizations and journals, magazines, and newspapers, census data, or demographic profiles. You can find this information online, at libraries, from chambers of commerce, from vendors who sell to your industry, or from government agencies. The library is a great resource from this, for this. I always recommend that my clients, and I do this myself, to go to the library and access their USA, Reference USA database. And this is where you can look up all of the information on your competitors if they're in the database and see what their revenues are like, what their expenditures are like, and what their employee sizes are like. It's very useful information and gives you a clear idea of your competitive landscape. So this section of your plan should explain the total size of your industry, trends in the total industry, is it growing or shrinking, the total size of your target market, so how many people within your target market can you reasonably expect to service or sell to, so what share is realistic for you to obtain out of that target market. So if your target market is people from age 45 to 65 in the Seattle area who have an income of over $100,000 a year, you can look that up in population data and actually have a good idea of how many people fall into that category and how many out of that population can you realistically service. And then trends in the target market. So is that population growing or shrinking and how are customer needs or preferences changing? Two, in this section, you need to talk about barriers to entry. So what barriers to entry does your startup face and how do you plan to overcome them? So this might include high startup costs, high production costs, high marketing costs, brand recognition challenges, finding qualified employees, need for specialized technology or patents, tariffs and quotas, unionization in your industry, all kinds of different um, Barriers may affect the way that you're able to target this market. Number three, threats and opportunities. Once your business surmounts the barriers you, of entry you mentioned above, what additional threats might it face? So this might include changes in government regulations, changes in technology, changes in the economy, or changes in your industry. And you can use a simple SWOT analysis to identify this. On the next page, if you've never done a SWOT analysis, it's pretty cool. It really gets down into what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what your opportunities are, and what your threats are. So for your product and service offering, what are its strengths? What are its weaknesses? Do you have any opportunities? Are there any threats that you need to keep in mind? Same for brand or marketing. Do you have any weaknesses? Do you have any opportunities? Really spell it out here. Same with staff HR finance, operations and management, and your overall market. So marketing is gonna be different from brand and marketing because market is talking about your overall population of your market, your target market, but then marketing is the method by which you reach them. So maybe you are limited by you, your marketing budget. That would be a weakness in the brand marketing um, row. So really spell it out here and you'll have a good idea of where, what you need to work on, what you need to keep an eye on, that kind of stuff. And can any of your strengths above help with improving your weaknesses or combating your threats? If so, describe that. Your readers really wanna know how you plan on addressing these. 
And based on the information above, what are your immediate goals or next steps? Exactly, how do you plan on addressing these? So both immediate and long-term goals in order to make sure that these threats don't turn into things that cripple your company and make sure that you do capitalize on the opportunities that you have and the strengths that you have. So next is going to be your product and service features and benefits. So describe all of your products and services, being sure to focus on the customer's point of view. So what is the most important feature in the view of the customer, in the eye of the beholder, what is actually special about it? What is going to make them buy it? And what are the most important benefits? What does it actually do for the customers? How does it benefit their life? How does it make them happy? Whatever you're trying to do for the customer, whatever problem you're trying to solve, really spell it out here and show why they're gonna be interested in buying your product or service. And in this section, explain any after sale services that you plan to provide as well. Maybe you wanna do product delivery, warranties and guarantees, service contracts, ongoing support, training, or maybe you wanna offer a refund policy. Next is going to be describing this target customer. So really go in depth into who you are actually targeting. So you may have more than one target customer group. So if you are selling a product to customers through distributors, such as retailers, you have at least two kinds of target customers, both the distributors who are the businesses and the end users who are the consumers. So identify these customer groups and create a demographic profile for each group. So for consumers, you wanna go over age, gender, location, income, occupation, and education level, and this, Profile is gonna help you with the above research where you figure out how big that actual market is in your area. And then for businesses, include the industry, the location, the size, the stage of business, are they a startup, are they growing, are they mature, and their annual sales. Next, you're gonna go over your key competitors. So one of the biggest mistakes you can make in a business, claim, business plan is to claim that you have no competition. Every business has competitors. Let me repeat that. Every business has competitors. And your plan must show that you've identified yours and understand how to differentiate your business from them. So it should include a list of key companies that compete with you, including names and locations, products that compete with yours and or services that compete with yours, and do they compete across the board, or is it just for specific products for certain customers or in certain geographic locations? So also include your indirect competitors here. For example, if you're opening a restaurant that relies on consumers' discretionary spending, then bars and nightclubs are indirect competitors. So who are your direct competitors and who are your indirect competitors here? For example, your indirect competitors may be other people outside of your geographic location. So they might be able to access their products and services occasionally, but they're not going to be a direct competitor to you. And you can use this worksheet on the next page to identify that. And I would only do this for the direct competitors, go in depth for that, but keep in mind that indirect competitors can impact your business and your readers wanna know that you've kept this in mind. So for your direct competitors, what are their pricing structures? What are their benefits and features? What is their size and profitability? And what is their market strategy? Do they use online ads? Do they use magazine ads? Do they prefer to advertise on radio or TV? Mark this down so that you have a good idea of where you need to be too. So once you've identified your major competitors, you can use this analysis on the next page to compare your business directly to theirs. So for each factor listed in the first column underneath here, assess whether you think it's a strength or a weakness for your business and for each of your competitors. Then rank how important each factor is to your target customer on a scale of one to five, one being very important and five being not very important. And use this information to explain why your product or service has a competitive advantage or disadvantage against your competitors. So are your products a strength or a weakness for your company and your competitors' companies? Are the prices, prices a strength or a weakness? 
quality, selection, service, reliability, stability, expertise, company reputation, location, appearance, sales method, credit policies, advertising, and overall business image are those strengths or weaknesses for your business and for your competitors' businesses. And then rank how important that is to your target customer. So maybe price isn't actually important to your target customer. Maybe they're on the higher end of the socioeconomic scale, and so pricing isn't really important to them. Quality is more important to them. Or maybe price is super important to them and quality is not as important to them. So really rank what is actually important to your target customer and what isn't so that you have a good idea of how you're competing against your competitors. So for example, if price is an important factor for your target market, you can make sure to do a lot of your marketing activities based around how much better priced you are compared to your competitors. So this is a good place to kind of figure out that differentiation between you and your competitors. And now that you've assessed your industry, product and service, customers and competitions, you should have a clear understanding of your business's niche, which is your unique segment of the market, as well as your positioning, so how you want to present your company to your customers. So in the positioning and niche, niche section here, explain those in a short paragraph. And then next, you want to explain how you will market your product or service. So in this section, explain the marketing and advertising tactics that you plan to use. So this may include online ads, ads, radio ads, cable television ads, or out-of-home ads like billboards and stuff. And which media will you advertise in, why, and how often? So marketing may include a business website, it may include social media marketing, email marketing, mobile marketing. Mobile marketing is basically ads that are included on your mobile device. So when you get pop-up ads from different apps that you use or ads via text messages, this is what is included in the mobile marketing category. And you can also use search engine optimization, content marketing, print marketing materials such as brochures, flyers, and business cards, public relations, trade shows, networking, word of mouth, and referrals. So what image do you want to project for your business brand? When you are marketing, how will you communicate this image to your target customers? And what design elements are you going to use? So whether that's your logo, different signage, or interior design, if you are creating an office space, if you are creating a retail space, this is going to be important here. And explain how each of those aspects are going to support your brand and your brand messaging. In the next section, you want to talk about your promotional budget. So how much do you plan to spend on the marketing and advertising outreach above? So be sure to break this down into before startup and on an ongoing basis. So before startup, these numbers will go into your startup budget. And then on an ongoing basis, these numbers will go into your operating plan budget. So you can use the chart on the next page to help figure that out. For target market one, what are the one-time expenses? What are the monthly expenses? What are the annual or labor costs involved? And target market two, same thing. Target market three, same thing. So across the board, what are your one-time expenses? What are your monthly and annual expenses? And what are your labor costs involved? And so you can use a cash flow spreadsheet to figure this out, but there's a lot of different detail that you can use for this, and you want to get a general idea. In section number two and 10, you want to explain pricing. So you explain pricing briefly in the products and services section, so now it's time to go into more detail. How do you plan to set your prices? Keep in mind that few small businesses can compete on price alone without hurting their profit margins. So instead of offering the lowest price, it's better to go with an average price and compete on quality and service. This goes back to that chart above when you were determining whether price is even a consideration for your target market. What can you compete on that doesn't include price like quality and service? And does your pricing strategy reflect your positioning? Compare your prices with your competitors. Are they higher, lower, or the same? And why is that so? 
How important is your price to customers? It may not even be a deciding factor. And what will your customer service and credit policies be? So you can use a worksheet for this as well. Put your business name down and then decide which of the following pricing strategies that you are going to use. For cost plus, this is basically the costs of making or obtaining your product or service and providing and plus enough room to make a profit on top. And then value-based is based on your competitive advantage and your brand. So what is your perceived value? And then explain why. Why did you choose this? What is your explanation? What is your decision-making process? Really list your industry and marketing practices here and any considerations that are, cons that are included in your pricing structure. Number 11, your location or proposed location. So if you have a location picked out, explain why you believe this is a good location. If you haven't chosen a location yet, explain what you'll be looking for in a location and why. So maybe it's convenient location for customers. Maybe it has adequate parking for employees and customers. Maybe there's proximity to public transportation or major roads. What is the type of space, industry, industrial, retail, or office, types of businesses nearby, and then focus on the location of your business here, not the physical building itself. You'll discuss that later in the operations section. And then 12, what are your distribution channels? So what methods of distribution will you use to sell your products and or ser services? So you could do retail, you could do direct sales, you could do e-commerce, wholesale, inside sales force, outside sales representatives, or OEMs, which are manufacturing businesses. If you have any strategic partnerships or key distributor relationships that will factor into your success, explain that here. And you can use a worksheet on the next page to really determine what the best distribution channel is going to be. So you can have distribution channel one, two, and three. What are your options? And then what is the ease of entry? What is the geographic proximity? What are the costs involved? What are your competitors' positions compared to the distribution channels? What is your management experience, st staffing cap capabilities, marketing needs, et cetera? And then 13 is going to be a 12-month sales forecast. So you can download a sales forecast spreadsheet or use a basic cash flow spreadsheet, but you want to create a month-by-month -month sales projection to determine specific details as to what to expect when you are forecasting your sales. If you've, if you've already made some sales, you can use those as a basis for your projections, but if you haven't sold anything yet, you need to create estimates based on your market research and your proposed marketing strategies and your industry data. So create two forecasts from this, a best guess scenario, what you really expect is gonna happen, and then a worst case scenario. So one that you're confident that you can reach no matter what. And then keep notes on the research and assumptions that go into developing these sales forecasts because financing sources will want to know what you based your numbers on. So after reading the marketing plan section here, the reader should understand who your target customers are, how, you're, how you plan to market to them, what sales and distribution channels you want to use, and how you will position your product or service relative to the competition. So that's it for this video. Next time I will go over the operational plan and the rest of the business plan, but I wanted to break it up into sizable chunks so that we're not covering too much information at once. So if you have any questions or comments on the first half of the business plan video, let me know, drop them below. I'm happy to hear from you guys. This is something that I often help my clients navigate and create essentially. So I'm a trusted resource for you guys and I'm happy to help. So that's it for now and I'll catch you later in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.